it's Tuesday which can only mean one thing it's two minute Tuesday rig video and today we're going to look at drop shot in before we get onto the rig itself let me show you something that I'm really particular about and that is how I transport my rods I try and make sure every single rod that I take with me is in some court form of protective case so my drop shot rod is in here and I use these Prorex rod bags for my shorter rods I think you can get these in seven foot and seven foot six I can't quite remember obviously not total length it's the rod itself when it's made up so these are really good so in here is like I said the drop shot rod and I tend to use a very very light drop shot rod which I'll show you in a sec so we just get that in the bag and also belt on braces approach this end I've got the the rod wrap whatever they're called now carp anglers I know exactly what their names are I've got the tip against the but of the rod so that's protecting that and in the Prorex rod holder as well so I try and just make sure everything is as bulletproof as possible now the rod itself this is a it's a Daiwa Ninja it's a fairly old rod now I should say it's really really light in fact I think it's classed as an ultra light finesse rod really and on it I've got a Daiwa Ballistic 1000 one of the things I learned very early with drop shotting is you need really light sensitive kit. If you have anything that's too heavy, you just end up not fishing the system properly. So I would recommend um, investing in a really nice light rod and a small light reel. The braid I'm using is actually not braid, it's Nanofil. One of the things I've found out with very, very fine braid is I just don't like the way it starts to fray. Even on your fingers, when your fingers get rough and wet after a day's fishing, you can start to fray the braid. So when I go really ultra thin, I've gone to Nanofil and it's been brilliant. It's a little bit stiffer as well, which helps with the very fine diameter braid. You've got to be careful how you attach your leaders to Nanofil, which we'll talk about in a minute. And finally, I then use a fluorocarbon leader with the drop shot. Now this is one of the things I really wanted to talk about in this video. If you drop shot in, you are a lot of the time fishing negatively. You're fishing slowly. You're trying to trying to get a take from probably small to medium sized perch, maybe one to three pound, four pound size zander. Definitely not pike because you'll get bitten off. If you manage to hook the odd pike and get it in the scissors, you could get it in. But um, you're not targeting pike. If you were on drop shot, you really need to look at yourself and go, really, no trace. Anyway, that's for a discussion for another day. So. My mindset is, if I'm using the drop shot, I've got to think like a match angler. Now, match anglers will try and get a bite. That's their first objective in any match, get a bite, work out what's going on, and then if they can scale up from there, they will. So I use the same philosophy with drop shotting. I will use generally five to three pound a leader. If you think about it, three pounds probably perfect for fishing in most situations because you're trying to catch fish that are probably two ounces to a pound and you've got to also imagine that because you're fishing so slowly with such small baits you're giving the fish time to inspect the bait so if they can see your leader or feel it or suspect something's wrong you're probably not going to get that fish to take so that's why I use a really really ultralight setup rod I'm not fishing at distance I'm fishing relatively short distances fine nanofill and I use like a three to five pound fluorocarbon now, just to prove the point here, this is uh, one of the ones I use. This is a five pound Guru. Um, it's 0 0.2 mil, and I think the three pound is something like 0 .0 0 0.18, 0 0.16. This stuff's really good. It's a little bit thicker than normal fluorocarbon, but I like it because it just gives you that extra thickness in which you can tie the knots nicely to any braid or nanofill that you're using for the leader attachments. That's what I use for that. And also, I've got a box here of hooks. This is one of the many boxes that I use. Now, there's all sorts of hooks in here. Just a little tip of how to get organised. These aren't drop shotting hooks. This is a range of all sorts of things. If I tip it up, hopefully it, the lids won't come undone. But you could see on there that I've actually labelled a lot of these compartments. And some of these top ones along here are some of the drop shotting hooks, like size 6s. I will use size 8, size 10. Might even use size 12. And the smaller the hook, the finer the wire hook I use as well for my drop shot in. So you can see my mindset with this, it's get a reaction, get a bite, and then 
if need be, scale up from there. Don't go the other way. Personal preference, I'm not saying I'm right, just the way I do it. Right, let's look at how we tie the drop shot rig. So, two minutes on the clock, I think I'll better do this one easily. Imagine this is where I've attached the leader to my braid or nanofill in my situation, and I would use a FG knot. Now, I used to use an Albright knot, but what I've discovered is that um, it, you can get some wear on the knot, onto the braid especially, with repeated casting. And I found in other situations, not so much a drop shot, it, it wasn't the best. So I have the last two years now been using the FG knot and it's been perfect. So I always use FG knot. Um, I found one, this FG knot on YouTube, as all, of all places, and this American skipper was demonstrating this knot and it's been brilliant. I will probably show it to you at some point in the future. So imagine that is where my leader material is attached to my braid or nanofill. And I'm going to use for this situation probably a, a wing span so I'd normally use probably a little bit longer not much of that length material and what I would do is put the hook on so it is facing up the leader material towards the knot to my braid so it is that way round now you can see I've got a whacking great hook on and I've got a size one I wouldn't normally use this size but just for this demonstration I'm going to use a slightly bigger hook Okay, then what I'm going to do is take the hook halfway along the leader material and I'm going to make a loop below the hook in the leader material like so and then all I'm going to do if you can just see that is then is then take the hook through the loop about two to three times once twice three times and then just had a bit of slide this is a bit where you've got to take your time is then just pull both ends of the leader back tight and what happens is you get a beautiful knot either side of the hook eye but you've got to take your time don't rush this bit otherwise you'll make a mistake so take your time and just feed it through gently and what will happen is you'll get this really nice knot either side of the eye and your hook sits perfectly like so. So hopefully you can see that. And going back to what I was talking about, this is attached to the my leader material and the other end is where I'm going to put the bomb or weight. Now, on drop shot weights there's normally a little clip and you can put the end of the line through the clip and just pull it tight and then you can adjust what depth you want to fish your bait above the bottom. On tight what I do is I put a loop in here to start off with, feed it through the eye of the drop shot uh, weight or even Arsley bomb and just put the, the weight back through itself so it can't come off. And in the session, if I decide I want to fish a little bit shallower, I then might use the clip just to take the weight nearer and near the hook. But um, like I said, being really tight, I don't want the weight to come off. So I use loops and then, like I said, adjust accordingly throughout the session. So that's it. Really simple. And that's how you tie the drop shot hook onto your mainline.